How goes the family? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hopefully you guys are having a great and exceptional day. It is Sunday. Like I said, I've been trying to get better uh, about going live on Facebook on Sundays. And, uh, you know, basically, it's my, I call it my little rant time. You know, a lot of people, you know, the beautiful thing about today's world is that we have all this technology. It could be the gift and the curse, but either way, um, because the, the, especially the curse side, the dab almost seen, so I've seen a person almost run into a wall at the grocery store today because they were texting and walking on their cell phone. And I saw a person that almost got hit by a car in front of me and me when they were texting and walking. They were texting and walking um, on a main road. And I'm just like, okay, look, I love technology. I love my cell phone as much as the next person, but there's just there's limits with it. And of course, you know, it's hard to, you know, and I'm like, and, and then the thing that kind of blew me because it's like, okay, we do live in a world where people can uh, talk and text. People don't have to actually look and see, look at their phone while they're texting. They can talk and text and it goes through in like two seconds. But a lot of people just don't want to do that. So it's just, it, it is what it is on that aspect. But at the, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, um, don't don't f fall so in love with technology that it becomes your best friend because that's why you have so many lonely people in this world because more and more people are connected to devices than they are to other people. All right. So that's one thing to look into. All right. Another thing to take into consideration is that um, trying to force things in life is the worst thing on the planet. You know, we live in an age where, you know, a lot of people um are forcing things they're forcing friendships they're forcing connection with families they're forcing relationships they're trying to force something for they for somebody to be something that they're not and my mindset is you have to respect people for who they are and leave people how they are do not try to turn somebody into something that they are not because that's when you lose them friendships family relationships you know, now it doesn't mean that you have to accept, stay with around this individual or with an individual because you're not feeling the energy of that individual. Absolutely not. But it does mean that you have to under, be the adult and say, look, this is clearly this isn't working for me. Clearly, this does not um, help productivity. This does not um, give me in, the kind of energy and the vibes that I want in my life. This is not the direction I can see my life going into. Because, like, I was just talking to a friend of mine. He was talking about time. Time is something that we can never get back. That's why you see the, the clock emojis and things of that nature. Um, time is like money. Money can fly away. Time flies away. And every second of every day, it's ticking. Every second of every day, it's ticking. So I got to make sure my dog is good. But we can't take time for granted. We can't take people for granted. You got to... And I'm learning more and more, hey, you know, as I'm getting older... As loved ones are getting older, you have to, you know, show people that you appreciate them just as an individual and and who they are and the things that they bring to the table and to this life. But I will say with all sincerity that, um, you know, pushing, trying to push like, because I've been guilty of this. I've tried to push people to get into career fields that they might want to get into. Try to push people into uh, opening up a businesses that they might want to open up push people to maybe be um in a relationship with somebody they don't want to be in you know push people to think like i think but they're not supposed to think like i think i think like i think you think how they think and this is how the world is supposed to be and another thing is you should never try to fit in somebody else's world you have your own world you can even worlds can can connect, but you always had that, you know. And I and I'm all I'm big for partnership. I'm big for teamwork and things of that nature. But eventually, you know, you got to be able to try to set yourself up in a position in this life where you can take the torch and move on or go forward. Case in point, um, to the people who are in relationships, living together, people who are married. Um, a lot of times, you know, if if a certain partner in that relationship falls ill for a medical reason or passes away, 
will you as the significant other be able to take the torch and carry forward? Was that was that individual insured from a life insurance perspective? So where in case something bad happens um, financially, because when it comes to trauma, everybody deals with trauma in their own way. Everybody deals with grief in their own way. So I can never speak on that. I can speak about the economics of it all. So when it comes to when it comes to the economics of it all, does this person have a life insurance policy? Does this person have any assets? Does this person, um, you know, are are they going to be covered while that while they are down temporarily or while they are down permanently? And, you know, former boss of mine, you know, he to me seemed to be in great shape. And one day he had a, some sort of aneurysm, and it's been over two years later, and he's still not back to one hundred percent. You know, and we're talking about a guy who had his stuff together. We're talking about a guy who, um, you know, financially, you talk about a guy who, uh, you know, I thought was, um, you know, in great health for the most most part. But we just never know. You know nobody can ever, you know, we just, one, we just never know. And nobody can ever, you know, um Nobody can ever just say, hey, this is, you know, life is going to be great. Health wise, everything's going to be awesome all the time. None of us can ever, you know, predict this stuff, you know. And like I said, at the end of the day, that's the, to me, that's the most scary part of life. <laughs> you know, so you got to be able to um, put yourself in a position and say, hey, you know, this thing isn't, you know, guaranteed, you know. We have to be, we have to be careful. We have to be mindful, you know, and that's why time is such a precious commodity. It's the best commodity on the planet. It's the best asset on the planet. Do you hear that snoring? That's my dog. He's knocked out. He's mad because I've like settled down. But yeah, it's like, we can't, we can't take that, take this thing called life for granted. You know, um, there's an episode of the Cosby show every now and then. And that's one thing I could say probably because of the pandemic. Every now and then, I like to watch episodes of stuff uh, that I grew up watching. Like, I've been catching up with Baltimore Homicide Life on the Street. And there was an episode of The Cosby Show where um, the one character, Theo, who's the only son of uh, Cliff Huxtable, Bill Cosby, um, they were, he, was, he was talking to his older sister and her husband, which is his brother-in-law, Sandra and Elvin. And I remember Sandra and Elvin, you know, as far as they were doing their, you know, life planning, estate planning in regards to if they pass away, who's going to take care of their kids? They had two kids who would happen to be twins. And um, and they were going to, they wanted to leave the kids with the par um, Sandra's parents, but they was like, well, they're old, they're in their elder years now, and, you know, they're, they're, their kids are like two or three years old. So, that you know, they was like, hey. We don't think it'd be, it'd be, we think it would be wiser for them to be left with somebody in our age range or somebody younger. So, case in point, they're like, well, let's leave the children with Theo. And as they have, he's like, you know, he was thankful, but he was a student at NYU, you know, New York University, planning to go to grad school afterwards as well. And he, um, so they were talking once they talked about, you know, the love part and the family part. Then they got down to the economics of it all. They got down to the whole, hey, okay, well, um, so Theo's like, okay, well, how much do you guys have saved? They didn't have much money saved. They bought a house, but they haven't even owned the house for a year yet. So the bank was owned the house. They had no equity. Okay. Then he's like, do you, okay, do you have any other assets like stocks, bonds, or anything of that nature? And I think they had like a couple of, couple of bonds, but not really any assets as far as stocks and things of that nature. And so, of course, Elvin and Sandra are losing their mind. And then, you know, Theo's like, you know, what? this might not be the best idea. He's like, I'm a college student. He's like, I scraped by basically living off of student loans and my parents. He's like, I don't even have a job, <laughs> you know, and he's like, and you guys don't have any assets. You know, this might not work. Because then I'm like, OK, well, do you guys have at least a decent life insurance policy to where there could be a profit at, of, of ins um, after you die? To where, you know, obviously the cremation or the burial is taken care of, but you have a, an insurance policy that's uh, high enough to the point where 
a person can benefit financially, you know, with a couple hundred thousand dollars or forty, fifty thousand dollars, because we're talking about the early nineties here. So and inflation was different back then. The cost of living was let lower back then. And it was like, no. So they had to they reconsidered leaving their children with Theo at, if they Lord forbid something happened to them, because they're like financially, you're not taken care of. Heck, financially, we're not even taken care of. On paper, in a sense, we we have the degrees, we have the nice jobs, but on paper, we hey, we have student loans we're paying back, we have um, a mortgage with kids, car note. So financially, they were just here. I'm not gonna say they were here, but they were here. But then, Lord forbid, they lose, they miss a paycheck, then they could be here. Lord forbid, somebody loses their job, they could be here on the bottom. And I say all that to say this. What are what are you going to do if things don't work out? What legacy are you leaving from an economic standpoint? Be a great person. Leave a great legacy in regards to the things that you're doing in this life. But what are you what do you what do you what are you worth in that aspect? Because so many, especially in in the high cost living era that we live in now, so many things can go wrong in so many different ways. And we don't even know. I mean, heck, more and more people nowadays are a paycheck away from being homeless. That is scary. Or if the member of the family passes away, the people, the family is a paycheck away from being homeless. I just had a consultation with a young man who's 16 years old. I wish I had his mindset back then. I, I, that's one thing. I'm jealous of this younger generation from a good aspect. I'm not hating on anybody, but I'm jealous of this younger generation that is in high school and college because, you know, this generation has had opportunity of knowing that, hey, I know I can have a job, but I know there's ways that I can make money online. Social media following, OnlyFans, sell products online, make content on any aspect, not just, you know, pornographic content, but there are ways for me to make mailbox money. I could just put my cash app out there or whatever, and I could wake up in the morning and, and see money there. Just because I just because I put something out on the internet. We're living in that era now. And that's in and so having this conversation with this 16 year old man, and he was able to intellectually, this young guy is smart, he could hold his own. And it's basically I do four consultations with people that want to talk about money. Uh, I mean, talking about setting up a, like an e-commerce store, people that want to get their resume looked at or, um, you know, updated and things of that nature. Or if people just want to have one-on-one -on -one aspects of uh, money, one-on-one um, -on -one aspects of a conversation in regards to um, how to how to get business credit, things of that nature. Just simple stuff that's one-on-one -on -one that you want to have a conversation with because a lot of this information is already out there. But you're not able to ask a question with somebody and I charge 40 bucks. So it's not a big deal, you know, simple consultation fee. And nine times out of 10 with the money, I'm just going to put it back into the stock market, put it in my savings. But, um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, the more, the point, the point of the, the moral of the story is you can't push people. You can't push things in this life that aren't meant to be pushed. You can't turn things into, you can't always turn something into something that you want it to be. It's just a reality. It's a harsh reality, a lot of people say, but it is a reality. And it's one reality that I've learned in my life that, hey, you know, things are going to be the way they're going to be. Sometimes it is what it is. Now, I would say a former coworker hated that saying, but hey, if you get shot in the head and you die, it is what it is. Some things in this life, because he's like, you have to, that means you're accepting failure. I'm like, well, sometimes you have to accept failure. You can't tell me, you know, rest his soul, Kobe Bryant won every freaking basketball game that he played. It's not possible. You can't say that Shaquille O'Neal's won every basketball game that he's played. It's not possible. You know, we're in the NFL season right now. You can't say that your favorite team's going to win every game. It's possible, but the, the odds are against them that they're going to lose at least one game. Just, uh, you know, because you always, you know, you're always um, against all odds in this life, regardless of the situation. So the the there's you know like life is literally checkers and chess. It's mostly chess. A lot of people want to play. Pe most people play the game of life as checkers, when it's just more black and white thinking. But really, life is like chess, where it requires much more in um, 
Now, I'm not just going to say intellect, but it requires a lot more critical thinking and a lot more patience and a lot more interaction. The maneuver, you know, like I got rest of soul, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali on my shirt. And he was a, he was not only a great fighter, but he knew how to get you with with get get inside your mind. And he and if he knew that he could control your mind, he got you because he you know as they would say back in the day, he had a cold mouthpiece. He knew if he could talk, he could he could talk you down. He knew that um, he he knew that um, he got you, and the moment you flinch mentally, that's when he could t go for the swing, and boom, you're down. That was Muhammad Ali, and he had the patience to ensure that he had a cold mouthpiece. And um, I think that's a lot of things. That, uh, of course, somebody's calling me. I think that is a thing that um, is missing with a lot of us, including myself, is the right having the patience to really go for what you want. Rushing always, for the most part, screws you over. Like when I was doing a consultation with the young man today, he was, um, I was telling him like, hey, I made a mistake when I opened up my Shopify store that I just allowed anybody from all over the world, not even thinking about it, um to shop on my store and because of that like i said i had people from all over the world shopping on my store at my store and they were putting in fraudulent orders with fraudulent purchases they were hacking other people's credit cards and debit cards and they were buying products from my store you know and the the good thing about shopify is and i gotta give them credit with them at least to show like hey this is a this the risk of um this order being fraudulent is very high so Proceed with caution. So whenever I see that, it's an automatic decline. Automatic decline. Decline the decline, and I refund that money and I leave it at that. Because it got so bad at one point, I had a credit card company saying, "Hey, these people made this fraudulent purchase, but it wasn't them. The card was used, but it wasn't them. Somebody hacked. So could you please just cancel the order?" I'm like, "No problem. Do it right now." So luckily, I've had less of that because I've had less of people, you know. Um, from other countries and even um when it happens it's in the u.s so i can't i'm not just going to blame other foreign countries it happens in the united states of america but now it's just easier to say cancel and i've had people email me back and say why <laughs> i'm like because it's a fraudulent order but i digress so the moral of the story is don't push the process of life embrace the process of life on that note, do the great thief free things. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. Don't forget to check out my online store. Um, get your Make Money Moves apparel um, if you're, and many other things. If you're an online investor, uh, I mean, if you're a stock market investor, crypto investor, individual, individual retirement account investor, don't forget to check out Weevil Stash, Acorns, Crypto.com, Coinbase, what else platforms you'll be able to make some money moves. And if you want to bless the channel with um, Cash App, Venmos, PayPal's, all the links are in the description of everything I just said. So, as I always say, make money moves or you're going to live broke like a fool. Take care.